and welcome to Adventure Away. I'm Emma and I'm a home educating mum of three from the UK. If you're new here, welcome. Here we talk all things home education in the United Kingdom and neurodivergent family life in a household of five neurodivergent people. This covers motherhood, parenting, decluttering, cleaning, all of the things, but centered around our neurodiversity as a family. If you're a returning viewer or subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. It means the world to me that you are still here. So, oh God. <sighs> oh, if you are new here, you will, you will soon find out that I yawn through all my videos. Uh, and if you're a returning viewer, you'll know, you'll be friendly with me going, Ooh, because I do it all the time. And there's too many to edit out. I'd, I just never make videos if I edited them all out. So today I want to talk to you about something that happened uh, almost a month ago, and that is my ADHD assessment with the NHS, uh, under the NHS Right to Choose scheme. Um, I went with a uh, company called Clinical Partners. I actually saw a video about them on here on YouTube saying that they had uh, not too long waiting lists and, um, and I went ahead with it. They didn't actually do the right to choose until March. They were supposed to do it in January, my GP, but they, uh, I think they were a bit funny about ADHD assessments and ADHD medication. Uh, so it was all a bit higgledy piggledy, but it got done. And I had my assessment within the year. So March, uh, it was 10 months. Um, it was done in March and I had my assessment in 10 months. My feedback appointment is coming up very soon. Um, I'm filming this on the 4th of November and my appointment uh, to find out whether I have ADHD or not, which we're already certain at this point that I do, uh, is in 10 days. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what to expect because uh, I actually have a really good friend who had gone through ADHD assessment literally maybe like a few weeks um, before I did. So it was really beneficial to speak to her about it and um, find out like what hers was like. And I'm really glad I had that because um, I would have been really nervous otherwise. And I thought maybe you are someone who is about to go through a adult ADHD assessment and you're a little bit nervous about what that's going to look like. Uh, so I can be that person for you. So it was over Zoom and I met with a really nice um, person and we had, I had, you know, kind of, he spent some time building some rapport with me. I was really, really nervous. He was like, how are you feeling? And I was like, really nervous. And he was like, oh, it's no need to be nervous. And I was like, I'm still going to be nervous though. And he laughed and was like, yeah, okay, fair enough. And we built some rapport and had a little chat and then we moved on to uh, talking about my developmental history. So talking about my life from birth um, all the way. <sighs> it is in my defense half night at night i should be asleep <laughs> um all the way from birth up to um adulthood so up to 18 and um we talked about what what it was like for me when i was a child uh it was what what was what school was like uh what my teachers said about me and my school reports did i know i do um and all of this sort of thing and um, we went, he asked me quite a lot of questions about how I was perceived by other, by adults, um, what my parents said about me, if anything, and um, that sort of thing. So it was, it was quite in depth and it was quite tiring at times because um, I didn't have, um, I don't have a relationship with my mother because of um, historic abuse. So uh, it was really hard to talk about my childhood in some respects um, because it was like asking me questions about specifically how I behaved and I found it a little bit triggering because I a lot of those things like how I behaved whether I was when I was being hyperactive I was being very loud or um you know I was maybe struggling with um finishing tasks that sort of thing was often a trigger for my mother to then behave in the way she did um and uh she's also the kind of person side note she's the kind of person that she thinks she didn't do anything wrong um I always wonder if she watches these videos and now she'll know because she, she she has no idea why I don't see her anymore. This probably won't enlighten her because she's that kind of person. Bless. Anyway, um, so yes, um, just a side note. If you ever hear in other videos I talk about my mum, I mean my stepmom, who is a treasure. Um, if I talk about my mother, I mean the person who gave birth to me. Just a sidebar there. Anywho, so after we finished talking about um, the developmental history and my childhood, we took a five minute break 
um he said i'm gonna go make a cup of tea like go to the toilet you know anything you need so i kind of just <sighs> aimlessly walked around the house for five minutes because the kids were out with phil and the dogs were out as well um so i i just aimed to walk around the house i had a drink i went to the toilet uh, i'd already had a drink with me so i didn't need to get a drink and i went to the so i went to the toilet and I just walked around the house because I was like, I need to just be out of the room. I did the assessment here in my room. I just need to be out of the room. And um, yeah, like not, not in the space for a minute. So when we came back, we then started talking about present day and struggles that I had um, in my life, my mental health. He asked me these questions, you know, like, you know, the kind of the is it the edinburgh depression scale like those kind of things do you have any feelings about hurting yourself no do you have any feelings about it? like all of that sort of thing um and he's like i'm really sorry some people are really uncomfortable asking this answering these questions but i have to, everyone everyone gets asked them and i'm like no it's fine or all, all of that sort of thing so we um talked about things that i struggled with do i feel like i'm hyperactive do i feel like i'm um feel like i'm like running on a motor all the time and the difference it was basically the questions that i was asked in my questionnaire so if you go onto the clinical partners website there is a questionnaire that you can do to like show your gp why you think you have adhd and it was basically and those questions i was then um asked again in a questionnaire before my assessment it's basically those questions but i was asked to give examples so um give an example of how you are hyperactive give an example of how you are um, inattentive and then it was like specific things so um like could you wait in a queue and um like if you saw a big queue would you join it would you like not just randomly <laughs> like if you had to get in a queue like and how would you cope with that would you be able to cope with it and I was like well I would probably just avoid going in the queue like if it was really big and I didn't really need the thing I'd be like eh never mind because I know that I'm gonna find that really comfortable like I'm not even gonna join it because I know that I'm not going to be able to cope with that. And he was like, oh, would you push in in the queue? And I was like, no. I was like, horrified, um, because I'm British. Uh, we don't push in in front of queues. And if we do, you know, that that stuff can, you know, get you beaten up. No, I'm not that. It's not that bad. Or is it? Anyway, <clears throat> moving swiftly on. But yes, there were certain questions that I didn't really understand and he explained them to me and i was like oh okay well that makes more sense one of the things was uh do i interrupt people going about their daily activities and i was like depends who you're talking about because if you're talking about like my husband yes all the time he can be in the middle of something and i'll be like i need you i need you to do this and i need you to do it now um and i don't it's not really that urgent i don't need him to do it now but like in my mind i do need to do it now will i call friends who work full-time in the middle of their work day talk about something that could definitely wait until the end of the day yes absolutely uh do i don't really think about it until i'm like on the phone with them and i'm like oh, sh they're working maybe i should oh, sh oh, just um usually my friends are very understanding though and they just make sure that off they just get off the phone as quickly as possible or they just don't answer the phone which is super helpful it's actually super helpful i'm like because it kind of reminds me i'm like oh yeah they're at work um and he was like, no, 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 strangers. And I was like, give me an example. And he went, you're walking through a busy restaurant and you hear a table talking about something that you feel you can weigh in on. Uh, so you interrupt their conversation to tell them what you think. I was like, I don't talk to strangers. What are you on about? Like, I mean, I would potentially like the other day, there was a person who um, was walking through a door and ended up stepping out of the way and hold, sorry, I've got a spot on my hand, and holding the door out for me. Instead of coming through, they opened the door for me instead. And they were wearing the cutest outfit. I mean, they were one of the tallest human beings I'd ever seen in my life. Uh, but they were wearing the cutest outfit, like brown corduroy trousers that had sunflowers on, and then this really cute beige jumper with a brown cap on it. It was adorable. They looked fantastic. And I say they because they were very feminine clothing they kind of sounded masculine so i'm saying they because i don't know whether they were he or she or they so i'm just gonna assume it was i'm just gonna go with unisex and hopefully no one will be offended but um yeah like they looked cute outfits just absolutely adorable and like i said that to them i was like i love your trousers oh my gosh and your top actually and they were like oh thank you and yeah so i was like do i interrupt people 
from doing their like regular activities like I wouldn't interrupt them if they were in the middle of a conversation and I didn't know them I would just maybe go to my table and then to be like oh my gosh Phil which is my husband um did you hear that blah, 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 blah. like and then talk about it I wouldn't interrupt them to talk about it like no but that just be I don't know why I don't I mean do you do that have you got ADHD do what do you do that do other people do that like no judgment if you do but I was like I'm not gonna talk to some random um maybe that's just because I just don't like people that's a rule you know you know what I mean when you say I don't like people you know, if you're, if you're autistic or ADHD, you will definitely know what I mean. Um, so yeah, so that was interesting. It was also quite emotionally draining. By the time I was done, I really needed to have a sleep, but I can't fall asleep during the day because my brain is literally like, ka -dum, ka -dum, ka -dum. Um, but yeah, so it's been interesting. And I thought that the weight for the feedback appointment was literally going to be forever and now it's just 10 days away so I'm quite looking forward to it now um I'm pretty sure that if um I don't have ADHD that I've got chronic PTSD instead because they can look almost identical um so that'll be interesting to see they'll probably probably say go for some CBT <laughs> um yeah so that'll be interesting to see what they say and I'll do another video on that like afterwards I'm going to pretty much come straight off the call and do a video on it because um, I'm doing this like almost a month afterwards and I can't remember the exact kind of things as such but um yeah so I will come straight off the call do the video and then like talk to my friends and family um yeah so it's very interesting and I think it's actually made my dad um look at his own behavior and go I think so I've been looking up ADHD and some things I see in myself and I'm like yeah yeah well uh there was a I was watching a scientist recently that said if I am diagnosing someone with ADHD I'm going to look at their family and if I don't see it in their family I'm going to be like what traumatized you um and I'm like that's interesting because I see ADHD in both my parents and I was traumatized by my mother so what came first the chicken or the egg <laughs> um yeah it's interesting it's interesting but yes so um it's not as bad so my kind of tips are one make sure you have a drink ready with you so you can have a drink and maybe a snack as well if you are the kind of person who gets hungry uh wee before you go even if you don't think you need to go it's like going for a long car ride yeah because it's like a two hour appointment so wee before you go um if you have a break in between have a wee then too because you never know it could just be me with my like really crappy really uh crappy bladder but you know <laughs> like who knows at this point um make sure you're comfortable you're sat somewhere comfortable that you can have someone with you if you want at least with clinical partners par bleh, clinical partners i could have like someone with me if i wanted to um i declined because i felt like i wouldn't maybe talk as freely if i had someone with me um Especially as some of the questions, as I said, I found quite triggering. I wanted to feel safe and not like um, held back or hindered in any way. So um, yeah, and that was that was really good for me, and I, I appreciate that other people might need them with them and need someone with them. Um, comfortable clothes. It was really important for me that none of my sensory difficulties were like ringing alarm bells. So I like was barefoot, for example, because socks just get me every time. Um, I was in my bed. I sat on my bed and made myself like a little cushion chair uh, of pillows and stuff. So yeah, just being really comfortable, making sure you're hydrated, and then take care of yourself afterwards. Make sure you, if you can, plan nothing for that day. I made sure that my that the that my husband was off on the day of the assessment so I could um not have to worry about um my looking after my kids or my pets or anything like that uh, that he was there as the primary caregiver that day and I was just a secondary um and afterwards to be fair I just binged sister wives because that's what I'm watching at the moment um and yeah, that's, so that's what I did afterwards. So that's my advice to you. Hydrate, go to the loo, be comfortable, self-care afterwards. If you have children, try and make sure, sure somebody um, is there with you to look after the children or something, or they're at forest school or being babysat or whatever, if you can. 
I appreciate that's not always easy, but if you can have them have as long a break afterwards as you can manage. So there we go. That's my advice. Thank you so much for watching. Um, are you waiting for an assessment for autism or ADHD? I would love to hear from you and offer you support where I can. Um, are your children, are you watching this because you kind of want a little bit of a um, insight into children having assessments or anything like that? Uh, all three of my children have either been diagnosed with autism or are on the waiting list to be diagnosed with autism. So um, one of my children is on the waiting list to be diagnosed with ADHD. So uh, which I suspect all three of them will be by the time they're adults, they'll all be diagnosed with autism and ADHD combined. Uh, if I was putting money on it, that's what I would guess. There we go. Uh, leave any comments or questions you have about neurodiversity, specifically ADHD and autism, because that's where my expertise lie, having potentially being someone with ADHD. Uh, my husband is almost certainly autistic and my children are almost certainly both. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about it and uh, bust some of those stereotypes as well, because not every autistic person is good at maths. Um, let's just remember that. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It means the world to me when you do. I do a little happy dance, a little bit like this. And don't forget to check out my pay hip shop because there are loads of stuff, especially for the freebies that you might want to check out. Take care. Love you all. Bye.